anybody out there. Hello, fellow travelers on planet Earth. Temporary though it may be. I'm going to post clips of anybody progressive-minded that wants to wants to be part of this whole project and what the whole project is is a Vegematics Collective Resistance Project. The whole idea of Standing Rock is coming to a uh, town near you. Isn't it hilarious how, <laughs> even as Trump is making himself really obvious as to what kind of uh, plutocracy is coming, to hear the uh, Trump supporters still saying he's an outsider. <laughs> this is from uh, Wall Street on Parade, which is a really good general information uh, website uh, if you're interested at all in Wall Street shenanigans. And, uh, this is from Pat Martins and Russ Martins, December 9th. The Wall Street Journal reported that President-elect Donald Trump was considering three individuals for vice chairman of the Federal Reserve Bank. And they're all super right-wingers. Uh, John Allison, long-serving head of BB&T Bank and a board member of the right-wing Cato Institute, which was half-owned by the Koch brothers. You, really outsider kind of guys, right? Yeah. Well, uh, um, Paul Atkins, a consultant, former member of the Securities and Exchange Commission, and a visiting scholar at the right-wing think tank, the American Enterprise Institute, which has heavy ties and financial backing from the Koch brothers, who else? And, uh, also under consideration, uh, Thomas Honig, vice chair of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and the former president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. Now, this man is, uh, he's one of these people that worships Ayn Rand, uh, the, and the lunatic fringe, libertarian propaganda swamp that the Federal Reserve's been thrashing about since Ayn Rand devoted disciple Alan Greenspan chaired the Fed for a staggering 18 years. <laughs> I think Mark Twain said that uh, it's much easier to fool people than it is to convince people that they have been fooled, and boy, have they been fooled. So, we know all about the Koch brothers, and they're uh, funneling tens of millions of dollars into... Uh, public universities mandating that the approval of faculty hires and curriculum to push free markets and deregulation. Man, they are going to loot America so completely by the end of, well, by the end of Trump, there will be no America left. <laughs> this guy is bad news, beyond bad news, and many people know it, but... And to the true believers, uh, my, uh, I feel sorry because you believe this shit. And I still don't think you deserve what you're going to get. And what you're going to get isn't pretty. Mm. And some people are probably going to do all right. You know, if they're very, very wealthy people, they're going to do fine. But. Uh, anybody working class who voted for Mr. Drumpf is in for such a rude shock. Do you really think that him deregulating everything, putting Ayn Rand 
idiots in, in charge of things. He's going to destroy the government and destroy the country. And meanwhile, do a lot of violence. I think it's very telling. I can't even remember what it was, but there was this clip that I just saw yesterday. Some comedian telling jokes about Donald Trump, and he's in the audience, and he's not amused. He's not even smiling. This man is a psychopath. Somebody that can't laugh at themselves. And I could see that, hey, this guy's already sizing him up for a prison cell, you know? Oh, you laughed at me. This is a kind of psychopathic narcissist that now will be leading the <laughs> once upon a time free world. There are very few of us then in this world, by your standards, who are worthy of love. Uh, unfortunately, yes, very Herr Trump has uh, offered Goldman Sachs president the top economic post. <laughs> this is from uh, Common Dreams. And Fox Meat Henhouse was how progressive Senator Barbara Lee and others reacted to the news Friday that Goldman Sachs president and chief operating officer Gary Cohn had been offered the position of National Economic Council Director by President-elect Donald Tiny Hands. Uh, should Cohen accept the Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, another Goldman Sachs alumni, would hold the two economic, top economic policy jobs in the Trump administration. <laughs> you guys have been so sucked in. And this, and, and, and you know, and I still see them defending him. Now, granted, Hillary, Hillary Clinton was a crook, and she was uh, far more attached to Wall Street than she should have been, but now you are going to see the economy in shambles, in absolute disrepair, chaos, insanity. <laughs> We won't even have, you won't have minimal protections. And if you have any money <laughs> in your bank account, I suggest you probably should put it in the gold and hide it under your bed. No, so, you know, I mean, it's just, you have to laugh. There's all these articles and people, you know, you look at his choices and how bad and how completely corporate they are. Oh, let's see other wonderful things in Uncommon Dreams. <laughs> Donald Trump is bullying unions. <laughs> yes, he is. He's bullying unions, and that's going to continue. Uh, internal memo sparks fear of climate witch hunt under President Trump. Oh, man. <laughs> Deeply disturbing Trump refusal of intel briefings raises concern. Concern, <laughs> I'd say get the fuck out of America if you live there. <laughs> While you still can. So according to this article, Alan Greenspan was not only a member of the Ayn Rand Collective, but he wrote essays for her objectivist newsletter and contributed articles for her book Capitalism, The Unknown Ideal. And this is a philosophy that removes all controls and sets the path for complete plutocracy. Uh, and even Alan Greenspan himself said, well, he didn't really get it all that right. Uh, we're still living under this lunacy with giant banks on Wall Street being serially charged with violations of antitrust laws and colluding, colluding with each other to rig markets of every stripe. Uh, Rand was a writer living in denial. She vilified government welfare programs but collected social security. Can you spell hypocrite? She wrote on the inherent morality of the intellectual elite. 
then had an extramarital affair with a younger man in her employ. She serially ranted against government intrusions, but testified willingly before the House Un-American Activities Committee in 1947 about communist intrusions into Hollywood. You know, Rand's philosophy is that selfish desires of the individual should have no restraints by government. The poor deserve their lot and should receive no tax support from other citizens, while the rich have a right to unrestricted power. Thanks to hundreds of millions of dollars that the Koch brothers have pumped into political campaigns, think tanks, economic courses on campus, combined with BB&T flooding the books of Ayn Rand to campuses across America, the nation is living this Randian, Greenspandian nightmare today. Currently, we are looking at billionaire presidents surrounded of cabinet advisors of billionaires with three former military generals serving as the Praetorian Guard. Adding to the Orwellian irony, co corporate-owned media continues to call Trump the populist president. There are very few of us, then, in this world, by your standards, who are worthy of love. Uh, unfortunately, yes. They and now this from U.S. Uncut. <laughs> House Republicans just revealed their plans for major cuts to Social Security. Well, there is a surprise, isn't it? I'm not going to touch your Social Security. No. Lies. Every time the man opens his mouth, it's a lie. So you bought it. You bought it. So accept that you were wrong about this man. Don't support him and join the resistance because what else are you going to do? Because otherwise you're going to lose your social security, your pension. There'll be no more public ownership of anything. Everything's going to get privatized. I mean, I'm looking at some of the, the headlines here. Trump just picked his interior secretary. Say goodbye to public lands and water. Trump's latest cabinet pick is a sexist pig who wants to replace American workers with robots. <laughs> oh, that's the CEO of Hardee's. Yeah, he's going to be in charge of the Department of Labor under Donald Trump. He also prefers robots to human workers. <laughs> hey, populist president. <laughs> with populist robots. <laughs> ah. Well, let's see. A staunch opponent of increasing the minimum wage and providing any health care benefits would suddenly be overseeing the federal agency with charge to make sure businesses like his own, Hardee's and these fast forward joints that starve people and depend on government handouts to their workers so that their workers don't starve to death and they can still make it to their shitty jobs on time. <sighs> the most alarming is Puzder, Puzder, what a puts, Putzder, desire to fire thousands of fast food workers and replace them with robots. I say that uh, that's probably not going to happen because we will smash your robots to pieces. The revolution will smash your damn robots to pieces, just like the Luddites did. <laughs> ah. Government is driving up the cost of labor is driving down the number of jobs. What a fucking puts. In recent years, there have been important developments in the academic literature on the effect of increases in the minimum wage on employment, with the weight of evidence now showing that increases in the minimum wage have had little or no negative effect on, negative effect on the employment of minimum wage workers, even during times of weakness in the labor market. Research suggests that a minimum wage increase could have a stimulative effect on the economy as low-wage workers spend their additional earnings on silly things like food and rent. <sighs> Let's see, this guy, aside coming out against the minimum wage, he's against 
Recent attempts to provide overtime pay to workers who put in more than 40 hours a week. He's opposed to restaurants having to provide health insurance. Of course he is. He's opposed to the government providing health insurance or restaurants to hire shitty paid workers. Uh, so just die, okay? Just die because that fucker doesn't want to pay your health insurance. Yes. Uh, I like our ads. I like beautiful women eating burgers in bikinis. I think it's very American. <laughs> oh, man. This guy is one sick fuck. <laughs> Variety Magazine says, The President of the United States will remain the producer of Celebrity Apprentice. <laughs> Only he's going to have a trap door like Mr. Burns now. <laughs> Release the alligators into the swamp. <laughs> this fucker still, still wants to go on to be producing television game shows while he's head of the used-to-be-free world. <laughs> A fucking bonehead. Oh, man. Oh, man, you gotta laugh. You gotta laugh or you're gonna kill yourself. You're gonna slit your wrists if you don't laugh. So laugh along with me, please. Hate my guts, that's fine. I'll just laugh all the more when all this shit starts happening to you, uh, drumplings. You poor, deluded, deluded souls. <laughs> you poor, poor, deluded souls.